Hi, my name is Michaela. I'm a proud member of the Kanya mob from Kanamala, Queensland. Today I'm speaking to you from the WBBL hub. I'd like to acknowledge the Wangal people, the original custodians of Sydney Olympic Park and surrounds. Acknowledging the elders past, present and emerging. Happy NAIDOT week. It's an absolute honour to be playing this week and I hope you all enjoy and embrace our amazing culture. I would also like to acknowledge the land which I'm hosting from today. Now, it's NAIDOC week, so I'm outdoors, I'm barefoot, it only seemed very fitting. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm on Gadigal land of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Now, if you would like to acknowledge the land in which you're watching from here in Australia, I'd encourage you to place it in the comments section of the post. It'd be a great way of beginning an individual commitment of awareness and acknowledgement that will lead to greater use and acknowledgement of Indigenous language. We had a lot of comments over the last month on the logo used and seen on the Australian playing tops, the silk I mentioned on our Cricket Connecting Country backdrop. This was designed by Arnie Fiona Clark, who was a descendant of James Mosquito Cousins, who was one of the original members of the Indigenous teams that played in the 1866 and 68 teams. The painting represents past, present and future Aboriginal cricketers. Circles represent various teams and meeting places and the wickets appear with no bales to convey that the game is continually moving on. Speaking of moving on, let's meet our guests this Nader Quick episode. Ash is a proud Muruwari woman who burst onto the scene in her early teens representing New South Wales at the Impaja Cup and the National Indigenous Championships in Alice Springs. Since that time, her achievements, well, they've grown at a rapid, rapid rate. So I'm going to try and put it into a very quick snapshot for you. She captained the Women's National Indigenous side on the 150-year commemoration tour to the UK to retrace the steps of the 1868 Aboriginal cricket team. She's played in Ashes Series wins, two T20 World Cup winning titles, including being named Player of the Match in the 2018 final in Antigua. In 2017, Ash smashed a century of just 47 deliveries in the WBBL. Ash is only the second Indigenous woman and the third Indigenous person to wear the baggy green cap. And cap number 174 was presented to her by Cricket Connecting Country favourite Dan Christian in one of probably, well, for me at least, most moving presentations I've ever heard. So Ash, on behalf of myself, Arnie Faith, Dizzy, our people and the rest of Australia, congratulations on being the third Indigenous person and the 174th <laughs> Test Cricketer for Australia. Congratulations. Go well. The star of the Sydney Sixers and the Australian women's cricket team, Ash Gardner, welcome along. How, how are we feeling in hub life? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's actually been really good, to be honest. Um, I wish we could play some more cricket and hopefully yeah. it stays away, but um, it's been pretty good so far. Now, there wasn't a dry eye in the house or at Taunton County Cricket Ground when you were presented the baggy green by Dan. Are you the kind of person that can remember every word he said or was it all sort of a bit of a blur? Um, I mean, I have watched that video quite a few times of him presenting it, but um, I do remember a lot of what he said and um, I guess all the kind words that he had to say. It was, um, yeah, like you said, a really moving um, cat presentation. Um, and it was just awesome to have him there to be able to present it. Obviously, I had no family um, touring with me in England and he was almost the closest um, person to family. So, uh, yeah, it was a really special moment. Yeah, I've never seen him so nervous in all my life as well. <laughs> He said he was more nervous than playing cricket. Like, he's, that was the most nervous he's ever been. Like, That's great. Love it. Um, look, our second guest is a proud Camilla woman and another star who has spent her fair share of hot summer days in Alice Springs at the Imparja Cup and the National Indigenous Championships as well. Last year in the WBBL, Hannah was the leading wicket taker for the Sydney Thunder. She absolutely bossed it with the bat. She was brilliant in the field, which led to her being awarded the Young Player of the Year as well, which Ash Gardner took out a couple of years before as well. She's captain the Sydney Thunder Indigenous squad and was also part of that team uh, that toured in 2018 with Ash to commemorate the 1868 tour as well. Now, for those who caught the walkabout wicket doco on ABC, Hannah was one of the stars of the show and it included a beautiful scene where she received a surprise call from the one and only Belinda Clark um, to let her know that she'd been selected on the tour. Let's have a look. Quick look at that. 
Hi, Hannah. My name's Belinda Clark. I'm Head of Game and Market Development at Cricket Australia. I'm ringing you tonight to let you know that you've made the Australian Indigenous team. Oh, wow. England. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. What was that? What happened? What is that? Go on, England. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, I've known Belinda Clark for probably 25 years and I still get a little bit starstruck by her. What was, can you remember getting that call? Did the heart rate sort of climb very, very quickly? Yeah, I was really confused when they handed me the phone. I thought it was a bit rude to have the, the phone ringing during the interview, but then as soon as I called Belinda <laughs> Clark, I um, was a bit shocked and, and definitely took the call willingly. Um, and it was pretty awesome. I think, I don't even remember what I said. I think I was just in shock. Um, and it was pretty cool to have the fan there as well. Um, the cameras weren't a giveaway or anything. It was really well planned, actually. But to have Belinda Clark ringing you is uh, pretty special. And hub life for you, studying marine biology, a course that I think Elisa Healy started but hasn't quite finished as yet? Yeah, I plan on finishing it. Um, it's only <laughs> first year, so I'm um, getting sl slowly through it. Um, I, a lot of the girls on the team are doing uni work as well. So it's kind of when one of us study, we all study and then muck around when we can. Fair enough. Now, I don't have to tell you two about the importance of the 1868 tour back in 2018, um, but for those that are not quite as familiar with the story, it's probably hard to comprehend in some ways that 152 years ago, there was a group of 14 players, 13 of which were Aboriginal, who became Australia's first sporting team to tour internationally. It was, I guess, in a sense, a triumph of resilience combined with the discrimination and tragedy that ended at the end of the tour. Two years ago, both of you joined the National Women's and Men's Indigenous sides on a tour of the UK to retrace those steps and mark the 150 year anniversary. I want to start by reliving a few of those moments now. The story of the Australian Aboriginal cricket team from the 1880s in my mind has to go down as one of the greatest untold sporting stories in our history. To come over here to play a sport that we all love um, is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it means a lot to me to be able to be here and I guess showcase our skills and ability as an Australian Indigenous cricketers. I'm here representing my people, myself, my culture. Not many people get to say that they stepped onto Lords. It was an amazing experience. It was a great time to be learning and listening at the same time. Most of the time we've, we've just watched, you know, Ashes contests on TV and seen how amazing they are. We're the first ever female team um, to come over to England and hopefully we're seen as pioneers um, for the next, hopefully, 150 years. Australian cricket as we see it today is the legacy of way back then and all you guys with the national colours on and all our guys, we're a part of that legacy. Ash, it was a phenomenal commemoration. When you look back on that team and, and the way in which you captain it as well. Where does that sit in all the things that you've done in a cricket sense so far? Um, pretty highly, to be honest. Um, it was a really good learning experience um, for me personally, but um, it was also really awesome just to see all of those girls being able to, one, go overseas, because um, I don't think a lot of them had been overseas, let alone being playing um, cricket overseas as well. So, um, and in saying that, obviously, being able to, I guess, share my knowledge on um, what playing in England was like, um, obviously being over there in the 2017 World Cup. Um, I had a little bit of knowledge about it, but it was just so awesome to be over there and to, to be given the opportunity to captain as well. Um, yeah, it was one of the highlights, I reckon, of my career so far. And um, yeah, hopefully we can, um, I guess, go on a tour like that again. Hannah, was that, um, Ash just mentioned, there was a few people going overseas for the first time. Was that the case for you? No, it wasn't for me. I was pretty lucky. I went to South Africa, I think, two weeks before. So um, oh, that's what it, is. it was, yeah, it was really awesome to head over there. Um, I think a couple of the girls were a bit worried about the 17 and a half hour flight or whatever it was. But yeah. I think we just kept reminding ourselves that the 150 years ago, they'd spent six weeks on a boat. So um, we had it, it, had it the lucky way. Um, <laughs> I had to sit next to Ash the whole way and she slept. So she was no fun. But um, 
perfect yeah, perfect partner. Yeah. yeah slept the whole way totally unfair any reply there ash well no i don't have anything because no. it's <laughs> I reckon a good hours of that 17 hour plane ride. <laughs> Hannah, when you cast your mind back to that, what were some of your fondest memories? Yeah, I can't go past the, the day we got to spend at Lords. I think everyone saw that in the itinerary and was really looking forward to it. We got to go around the museum with some really cool artifacts that were there from the original tour, um, take some pretty cool photos, and then um, we got to sing the team song with the Australian men's team. Um, and our Aboriginal men's team as well in the Lord's change rooms, let alone to just be in there, but to sing the team song. Yeah. Um, Justin Langer led the song. There was three song masters. It was one of the coolest experiences ever. I don't think my jaw left the ground. Uh, <laughs> that will definitely be one of the, the biggest highlights, both on and off the field, that, that whole day at Lord's. You've played, so you're at Lords. You also played at the Oval as well, which is one of the iconic um, grounds. I was lucky enough to, to see you guys playing there with the old gasometer in the background as well. Did you, did you find yourself sort of pinching yourself, thinking that you were probably a couple of years ago just sitting at home watching these grounds? Yeah, it was weird that we were, were playing there and I've watched Ashes series growing up um, when the Aussies would go over and play the Ashes. So it was pretty cool. We got to play at the Oval and Trent Bridge. Um, and got to spend some time in the Trent Bridge change rooms with the men's team after as well. Yeah. And you see the classic photo of Shane Warne on the, the Trent Bridge balcony and yeah. kind of cool, like we were literally standing right there. So um, yeah. some of those memories will, will stick out for a long time. Ash wasn't sort of doing the warning on the balcony at all? <laughs> I'm pretty sure she had a stump somewhere, but I don't think okay. she had a stump <laughs> <laughs> to live up to. Yeah. <laughs> Ash, the 1868 tour on one hand was was amazing in the sense of you had these amazing athletes, um, stories of resilience, they were certainly inspiring in a lot of ways as well. But then on the flip side, you also have a man that was an ex, expat Englishman who was a first class cricketer who in Charles Lawrence, who set this up, taking the Aboriginal players across there, basically as a, as a I guess, as a sideshow for exotic races, as they called it back in those days, following on from the publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species. So there's two complete polar opposites feelings here. One of these amazing athletes, one this guy who was just basically trying to make money off the tour as well. How, how important is it for people to speak about both sides of that story? Uh, really important. Um... I think, yeah, the word resilience is like encapsulates that perfect. Um, and like I hadn't touched on before being, having to travel six weeks on a boat, um, you have to be pretty resilient to then get up and then play. Um, I think it was 40 odd matches. They were over there for over 200 days and were playing um, almost 90% of that. So I think it's really important being able to tell both sides of the story, um, the good and the bad, and just to, I guess, reiterate to people um, how brutal it was back then and how, Aboriginal people were treated um, and it's a it's a very it is an untold story and a lot of people don't know about it so um, I think yeah making sure that you tell both sides of the story um, is really important to, to people. Um, I want to have a chat about the rise of um, Indigenous cricket talent here in Australia as well. Um, for a long time I think most people sort of resonated and sort of were drawn towards the name of Arnie Faith Thomas and Jason Gillespie as sort of the, the two that had played cricket for Australia. Um, in the last probably 10 years, we've seen just that really rise and, and lift in, in the sense of the numbers now. And we're really fortunate to have 10 Indigenous players in the men's and women's Big Bash this year as well. Um, Ash, when you think back to probably even only maybe two years ago, and now you look at the strength within the women's games, you must be just really proud yourself to see the names of Annika Leroy and McKinley, um, Michaela Hinckley, Ella Haywood, that are now in the mix as well as the two of you. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's a credit to, I guess, Cricket Australia as well, with putting a national Indigenous championships on every year um, in Alice Springs to almost have that pathway for, for those athletes to to go down and um, to be given the opportunity to, I guess, showcase their talents um, at a semi-elite level and then to be recognised to come through the ranks and to be playing in the Big Bash. Um, yeah, it's so awesome to, to see that there's more girls coming through. And um, yeah, like you said, you look back, I don't know, three years ago, that was just me, myself and I. And um, <laughs> I was definitely hoping for, 
for some young players to come through and um, the likes of Hannah Darlington and Annika Leroy from New South Wales. Um, yep. I got to see them from a pretty young age through the um, National um, Indigenous Championships to, I guess, see them grow not only as cricketers, but as people as well. And um, coming through the state um, system this year for the first time, um, yeah, it's been really exciting to see them, um, yeah, grow. Hannah, you're at the Sydney Thunder, both with Annika and, and Brendan Doggett. Both of those players have gone through the National um, Indigenous Championships as well. How important, um, Tipping, you've all spoken about the importance of it in terms of your pathway to um, WBBL and, and the Big Bash. Um, but how important is it for you personally to have played in those championships and, and more so around the bond that you get from, from playing in them as well? Yeah, I don't think I realised how special it was until I um, headed up there the second year and really figured out how amazing it was to, to come back. Um, that was probably what stood yeah. out the most. Um, and to have a, a core group that was always there, the senior players were amazing. Um, and then to form bonds with Annika, um, and now we get to continue that in the Big Bash has been really special. We had our first year up there together and we were little kids, um, and now we're out here in the Big Bash, which is something really special. And then to have Brendan join the Thunder as well has been awesome. Um, yep. I got to spend a little bit of time with him last year, um, just speaking around the Indigenous jersey and, and some of the initiatives Sydney Thunder were able to put in place. Um, and then for Annika to join this year has been really special. And um, yeah, quite nice to have a, a mate around the squad, but also um, another sister. I suppose the other piece too, and we've spoken about it a bit on Cricket Connecting Country, is that when we speak about Indigenous, it is, it's such a diverse space. So you get the opportunity then of actually listening and, and hearing about, you know, a, such a wonderfully wide range of experiences from all these different players as well. Yeah, I think Thunder's doing an amazing job as well as Cricket Australia in, in really sharing all our stories now. Um, you know, we've all got different stories and they've all got um, amazing parts to them and they're coming together really well in terms of um, forming what this kind of next generation of Indigenous cricketers are able to do on, on the world stage. And I think it's really cool um, that, you know, we've now got three within the Sydney Thunder and can start to really push um, to get some more up through the ranks. And yeah, I think it's amazing to see um, just how far we've come in that. Ash, last week, last week, I'm losing track of time very, very quickly. Last episode, we had uh, Tamika Sadler on and Ben Thompson. They spoke beautifully about um, their journey, but they also said that it, it becomes really draining at times, being sort of the face of. You've pretty much been the face of, you know, Indigenous women's cricket for the, for the last little bit. Um, can it get all consuming sometimes for you? Do you need a break from it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like it's, um, it does get a little bit draining at times and um, like having to do all the media around it and stuff like that. Um, but in saying that, it's obviously for a good reason and trying to get people's stories out there and um, my personal story out there and I guess just highlighting um, what I've achieved, not only as a cricketer, but as a person, both on and off the field. And um, <clears throat> I guess now I'm, I'm lucky that there are four other girls to, I guess, lean on um, in this space and um, yeah, it's just, it's so exciting to be able to showcase people's stories and, um, yeah, I guess, celebrate it. Yeah, most definitely. I think in, in recent times too, we've certainly seen a, a heightened focus here in Australia, but specifically in cricket on the acknowledgement and the celebration of First Nations people. And in recent times around the world as well, Black Lives Matter in terms of the USA and uh, also in England, a lot of sporting leagues right across Europe as well. Um, Hannah, I might want to start with you because of the connection with the Sydney Thunder. Um, you've captained the Indigenous uh, Development Squad and been in and right around the environment for some time now. What's it, what's it like from the inside when, you've, when you can see all this happening around the world and you're in a club that is so passionate and genuine about talking about this space as well? Is it... I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Is it is it all about the Sydney Thunder in the, at the moment and about you and the players within the squad? Or do you have that sort of bigger view about what's happening around the world as well? Yeah, I think our squad is in a, a really good place in the moment in understanding that we've got the Thunder Nation that supports us and the Thunder Nation is worldwide for us. We do have, um, you know, countries around the world that support us and we have ties to. But, you know, we now have international players from England um, and, and that has brought in a really different perspective and it's been really good in terms of we were able to sit down as a squad and, and recognise um, what our job was and we take it upon ourselves to, to be a love club all around the world um, and be able to push that um, we are supporting everyone, um, use 
um, opinions, whatever it might be. And for us, it, it came down to that, you know, people had a view and everyone in the team went to support that. And I think it shows, um, you know, the amazing stuff the club's doing behind the scene. And it took nothing from the club to, to push for those abuse or opinions. It was all from within um, and they supported us along the way. Were you surprised when Heather Knight joined the, not that she, surprised that she joined the Thunder, she's doing exceptionally well for the Thunder, but were you surprised when she came out and was so vehemently strong for the Black Lives Matter as the English women's captain? No, I don't think I was surprised. Um, we saw in the series against West Indies, the way the England players went about it really respectfully to support yep. them. Um, and they brought it across and that was completely fine. I think we expected that um, and we're ready for that. And the fact that we came together as a group and were able to support their decision. Um, and then also our South African player, Shabni Mishmael. So there was many different sp perspectives coming in. Um, and I think for myself and Annika, we um, we're happy to, to take it as long as it didn't take away from the um, barefoot circle, which it didn't. And they were super yeah. respectful in that way. So um, yeah. I think all in all, we came together as a unanimous decision. Um, and it was one that had really supports everyone. Yeah. Ash, so, so many times over the last probably five or six months, there's been the comment about it's, it's a movement, not a moment. So we can't just have that one moment in time and it has to be really genuine as well. I look back at the Australian women's cricket team and the leadership that you and Rach Haynes and Meg Lanning have shown in that space has, has really encapsulated that, that genuine space so that it isn't just a one-off. Can you talk to us a little bit about that journey for you? Yeah, um, it's been an awesome experience to, I guess, get in touch with those girls and something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and to almost make a commitment um, as an Australian women's team to to want to learn more. Um, and I think that was, I guess, the main issue for, for people was they just didn't feel educated enough to, I guess, talk about these things. And um, I think that's the most important thing is educating yourself so you are confident talking about it. Um, and as a group, yeah, we basically came up with um, a few things that we wanted to do. And um, I organised our first little, I guess, education session, you could call it, um, with my auntie Doris. Um, and yeah, like that was, it was so awesome just to one, see her, because I hadn't seen her in a little bit, but just to hear what she had said um, or had to say. And um, I guess she tried to keep it really relative to, to her personal life and um, I guess what she had growing up and the experiences that she went through and um, and not only did everyone else learn but I was also um, learning along the way and what she had to say so that was um, something that I really enjoyed um, and she was quite funny throughout it as well which was good to keep people engaged but um, yeah as a team we're committing to yeah, it's obviously educating ourselves and um, being more confident in that space, but also trying to, I guess, do hands-on things as well, whether um, that's going boomerang throwing, um, which I've been able to do with the cricket team before, which everyone really enjoyed. Um, so just different things like that. To, well, I guess, who was the best? Who nailed it? Well, we did it for breakers a couple of years ago and yeah. there was not many people that could actually, I don't think anyone caught it when it came back around, mind you, because it <laughs> comes at a pretty rapid pace. <laughs> um, oh, that's good. Most people were good. Like if you get the technique right and obviously everyone is decent at throwing, like it yep. does come back around. So I can't. Okay. It's more the catching than the throwing. It's the catching. Like yep. this is coming back fast. So you yep. probably like, you got to be really careful. Yep, to fair enough. <laughs> When you said um, that the players wanted to be educated, do you, did you get the sense that, and I'm still learning myself, and I, I know I get nervous at times that I'm going to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. Do you get that that's maybe one of the, the reasons why people are a little bit hesitant to try and learn more? Absolutely. And that's, um, I guess, something that I tried to reiterate to the girls was if you do have any questions and if they're not just blat blatantly racist, like, just ask them like people it's a safe space and um just be confident in asking those questions because yeah like you said like that's why people don't want to learn because they're like oh like i don't know if i'm saying the right thing like people could take it the wrong way and that just yeah. comes back to people i guess being uneducated and um I, in saying that that's probably when people make racist remarks because they probably didn't think that it was the wrong thing to say, but it just came out the wrong way. And people obviously can take that really personally. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's exciting that girls want to learn more and um, 
and our staff too, um, which is really exciting to, to be involved in. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we've certainly seen at the start of um, the WBBL all teams uh, performing wonderful acts of symbolism to demonstrate their commitment to stamping out racism and shining a light on the horrific inequalities that exist both here in Australia, but also right around the world. Teams have formed pre-match barefoot circles, which both Hannah and Ash have spoken about, and some have also taken a knee, and some have also added a permanent symbol to their uniforms as well. Let's take a look at one moment when members of all the teams came together to launch the WBBL. As eight captains and five Indigenous players, we did a barefoot circle and just had a couple of moments of silence, I guess, just to stand with the Indigenous people and just show our support to our beautiful culture. It was awesome to stand on a united front in respecting the land and to get together with some of the leaders of the teams and be educated together through that. Well, let's close the gap. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just start with reflecting and then um, pass on to HD to start with the welcome to or acknowledgement of country. You know, it was really special to be able to come out here and, and connect a country with those girls. So to be able to do the acknowledgement with um, Hannah Darlington was really special. We gather here as sisters of this country to acknowledge and pay respect to the original sovereigns of Australia, to honour the legacy of the 1868 Australian cricket team and to stand strong against racism. As leaders of our teams, we stand together in a circle today to symbolise strength and connection to each other and to country. As representatives of the WBBL, we will now walk together toward our journey to a connected country. Yeah, to be able to do that as an Indigenous Australian myself is, is really special and, you know, not only is it special for me, but it's special for my people and my family and also other Indigenous Australians. I think the Barefoot Circle just connects us to country and just to be here with all the other players and especially the Indigenous players it's awesome to see the numbers growing and it's really exciting for Australian cricket as well. We all agreed on doing a barefoot circle before the first round and just making sure that all teams were on board and teams didn't get to the first game and were a bit unsure on what was happening and just making sure that yeah, everyone was there to support a really important cause and it's going to be a pretty powerful thing I think. Hannah, I'll come to you first because you've already spoken about having someone like Heather Knight in your team at the moment who really led the charge for the England women's team against the West Indian women's cricket team recently, whereby they all took the knee at the start of that, that series. The barefoot circle, I think, is one of the most beautiful things to see and be involved in. For you, does it matter which one occurs or is it more about the entire symbolism of it all? No, not at all. Um, and I think the way Heather went around it, went about it around our squad um, was the perfect way to do it. She didn't push her opinion on anyone. And I think that's why we took it so well um, in terms of just supporting her decision. Um, it wasn't her decision though. I think I, I, um, it came together as a group really well. And that was just one person who had an opinion and many in the room did. Um, and like I said before, it was that unanimous decision. And um, yeah, I don't think it matters um, which one happens first. And it was really nice that we got to do the barefoot circle round one and we'll do it again during NADOT week. But taking the knee each game is something we've committed to and we'll, we'll do it at the beginning of each game. Um, but yeah, I don't think if, um, you know, I could say if Heather wasn't in the squad, um, I still think the same decision would have been made. Um, so I don't think, yeah, she's pushed it upon anyone, but it's been really nice that we've um, made that decision together. Ash, do you sort of feel as if this is a bit of a defining moment for, for cricket in, in their stance against raci racism as well? Yeah, absolutely. And um, what better way to show it, but to, to be doing these things and um, I guess, yeah, going back to the education piece, but to be educating yourself on it. And um, I know everyone's against racism. Like that's pretty obvious if you're a good human being, but um, yeah, to be putting these symbols in place to, to be broadcasting it, um, I think is really important as well. Yeah. And can you just talk to us a little bit about the symbolism of actual bare feet as well and taking the shoes and socks off? Yeah, I think that's um, the best part about it is you get to connect a country and that's what it's all about is um, connecting to the land that you're on and um, also being able to acknowledge the land that you're on as well. And um, I guess that's what you do when you do the barefoot circle is um, if an elder can't be there to welcome you to the land, um, another person can obviously acknowledge um, the land that you're on. And that's, I guess, the most important thing is, yeah, taking your shoes off and um, getting connected to the land and then acknowledging it as well. Yeah. Um, Ash, NADOC week, what have you got planned? 
What have we got planned? Uh, well, obviously I want to be painting some shoes. So a couple of the players um, will be wearing some shoes that I've painted, which is really awesome. But um, yeah, just being- the commentators as well or just the players? <laughs> well, I mean, when I've got some spare time, I'll be doing, I have been asked. I mean, Michael Slater was the first one to ask out of the commentators, but um, yeah, more than happy to, to do that. But um, yeah, just to, I guess, celebrate um, our beautiful culture. And um, we don't obviously normally get to play through NAIDOC week. It is normally through our, um, through our winter. So it's the first opportunity to, to be playing some cricket and to be, um, yeah, celebrating the culture is um, yeah, such an awesome thing. And talk to us about your family's involvement in the Sixers uniform. Yeah, my cousin, um, Alan, got to design the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cup shirts for the Sixers team. Um, there's a beautiful rainbow serpent um, goes through the middle, or in my language, it's the Mundagutta. Um, and yeah, it's just awesome to, I guess, have that family connection um, to a painting that's going to be worn by um, those players. So yeah, it's a really cool opportunity that he was able to do. Is your understanding of your language getting better as the years go goes on? I'm still learning. Like the thing is, like there's been so much lost um, throughout the years, and language is the one that's probably been lost the most um, across Australia. Um, and it's something that I want to learn more of, and not only just language, but just more about my people and um, being able to go back to where where my people are from is something that. I do want to do, but um, yeah. COVID happened and um, I was actually planning on going out there, which is really unfortunate, I guess, to, to not be given the opportunity to go out there, but um, it is what it is. And um, I guess the next opportunity that I get, I'll be going out there for sure, just to just to connect with the land and um, to talk to all my aunties and just listen to stories and um, yeah, learn language if I can, but yeah, yeah. just to that, to that land. It sounds as if you're going to have to take Annie Doris too. She sounds like a hoot. Arnie Doris will be out there. She okay. proper hoot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet this woman. <laughs> um, Hannah, for you, you're going to bring uh, pull on this uh, beautiful shirt designed by proud human woman Rihanna Lotta as part of NADOC Week. Talk us through that shirt. Yeah, it was awesome to see um, Rihanna design the shirt last year, um, and I'm pretty stoked that we get to to get one this year. And yeah, it, it's pretty awesome to be able to walk out there with my Indigenous stickers. But now it's even better that we get to walk out there as a whole collective squad um, with our Indigenous shirts. So I'm super excited for that game. Um, and I think it's just going to be an amazing week to be able to showcase everything that's going on. And the design on top is going to be amazing. How did it all come about? Because it's the First Nations Festival. So it's the, it's the cup between the Sixes and the Thunder. Um, and it's going to be taking place over, over a couple of days. Do you know the history behind it and how it all came about? I know the, the men started a couple of years before us and would head out to Orange and Dubbo and these rural areas that a lot of the players actually came from um, within these respective squads. And they would go out there and play a couple of T20 games. Um, and then they brought the, the girls squad in and the Thunder went down to Hobart and, and played a Hobart team. And that's kind of yeah. how it kicked off for the, for the girls. And um, we were lucky enough to win the trophy down there. And now we're lucky enough to be able to play in Sydney as well against the Sixers team. So it's just yep. shown the numbers have really grown to be able to play against, um, you know, two Sydney teams. And yeah, I think it's one of the highlights of the years for the girls, apart from going to Alice Springs, of course. Of course. Well, it, it started off as the Imparja Cup in Alice Springs and then the National Indigenous Champs sprung out of that. So you've sort of got the community and the elite. Is the big picture, and, and ideally for you guys, maybe to have every... WBBL team having Indigenous side to be part of this as well? Yeah, I look at the numbers coming through um, the Imparja Cup and the NICC in the last couple of years, and I think it's definitely possible to have um, maybe in a couple of years a, a whole tournament um, where it is showcasing the, the WBBL teams um, throughout that. And, yeah. and yeah, I think the championships up there are amazing. So any chance we give them to play more cricket will just give them a better pathway to come and join our squads. Ash, as if you don't have enough you know, things to do at the moment, time on your hands, but you've just started a foundation as well. Is that one of the biggest challenges you've ever gone through? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it, I, I guess it was a vision that I've had um, probably for almost 12 months now. And um, I always thought like, why not? And um, I guess the platform that I do have um, and being able to help people um, and more importantly, my people, um, I thought, yeah, why not do it? And why not try and, I guess, make a difference? And mm -hmm. um, 
it's been challenging and um, I don't know, I what was it probably May, um, I kind of got things or the ball rolling. Um, and yeah, it's legally set up at the moment, but um, I guess one of the hardest things is the financial um, point of view to, I guess, implement this program. And um, yep. that's the hardest thing because there's so, like I've got all these um, visions and dreams for this um, foundation to be really big and successful to yep. help kids, um, young Aboriginal kids to, to make a difference and to change, um, I guess, the stats on things. And um, I guess my main vision, I guess, long-term is to for kids to finish school um, because I think that's so important to decreasing um, things like incarceration numbers, which is obviously very prevalent um, in Australia of um, Aboriginal people are 3% of the population here in Australia, but um, over 70% incarcerated. So that's something that I guess is close to me. Yeah. I want to change those numbers. Uh, I want people to have more positive um, outlooks on life. And I think what better way to, I guess, have a really good education. That's um, the thing that's the forefront of my mind. And but yeah. then also relating it back to, to what I do in my life. And that's sport and um, that's to provide those kids with sporting equipment and to, to give them the opportunity to have unstructured play um, with a breakfast club. So um, yeah, making yeah. sure that they're fueled with nice healthy foods um, to make sure that they're uh, paying attention in class. Cause I think that's the most important thing is if they're, <laughs> if they're not thinking about food or they're not they're hungry and giving them that opportunity to, to have a healthy start to the day, I think is also really important as well. Yeah. Come on. Shameless plug here. Get it out there. Where, where's everyone going? Ashgfoundation.com. <laughs> There's a big donate now button right at the start. <laughs> Perfect. So basically, don't be shy, people. Yeah, come on. Come on down. <laughs> that is it. Um, well, look, I couldn't think of a, a nicer way to, to wrap things up today. Guys, I, I know it's, uh, it's a completely different kind of life living in the, uh, in the bubble for WBBL. Um, some people, I, we sort of see the golf simulator and the barista and we think, ah, oh, it must be so easy. But I know it is tough. I know you've coming from training and going to training. So to coordinate this, we really greatly appreciate your time and effort. Thank you so much. Um, can I say we're both ho hoping that you're playing off in the final? Is that, would that be the ideal scenario? I'm happy to say that. Okay, <laughs> Darlington bowling to Gardner for one of the uh, WBBL <laughs> final in the, in the coming weeks. Um, what we have asked the, our last couple of panelists as well is, if you had a suggestion for anyone listening in today on how they can be um, a better ally or learn more, what would it be? So, Ash, I'll, I'll start with you. Shit, you think? <laughs> I told you I can go off script sometimes, can't I? <laughs> what, um, do I need to jump in, Ash? Do I need to save you here? Come on, Hannah, save her. She slipped yeah, yeah. on your shoulder all the way to, to England, so <laughs> we just giving you much. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess... The biggest thing um, I can kind of point out is don't be scared to be educated. That's the biggest thing. Um, we really appreciate if um, you want to learn and we're happy to help you learn. Um, yeah. And yeah, like Ash said before, is we're happy to answer questions. Um, yeah, I think don't be scared to be educated because once you are, um, it's a really special thing to be a part of. Yeah, well said. She's given you some perfect... I, that perfectly. I don't have to add anything because... Like, I can honestly, assume. That is... <laughs> That is definitely the most important thing is just the education side of things. Um, and that's probably what's lacking worldwide at the moment. Um, but like Han obviously said, don't be afraid to ask questions because um, that's how you're going to learn. And um, yeah, I think people are always willing to answer questions. And yeah, that's the most important thing is just you know, being educated on these um, big issues. Yeah. Ash Gardner, Hannah Darlington, thank you so much for your time on Cricket Connecting Country. All the best for the rest of the WBBL. And remember, when you go on that next tour of England, you need a manager, you know where to come. <laughs> thank you. <Done>. Thanks, All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys.